Good morning. Today is the feast day of St. Thomas the Apostle. Thomas is mentioned among the number of the apostles in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But it is in St. John's Gospel that his significance is revealed. Firstly, he is heard encouraging the other disciples to go to Judea with Jesus. Then, not knowing what Jesus meant when he talked about where he was to go, elicited the answer that Jesus was himself the way. But probably most famously, he was the apostle notably unconvinced by the reports of the resurrection of Jesus, causing Jesus to show him the marks in his hands, his feet, and his side. Thomas then proclaims the words that have been described as the great climax to John's gospel by saying Jesus to Jesus, my Lord and my God. St. Thomas the Apostle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I welcome everybody on YouTube, those watching on the parish website, to this very simple service of the Holy Eucharist. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to receive our blessed Lord in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The invitation to confession. We run the race set before us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely bring in to Jesus in penitence and faith. We confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect Readings and Gospel.
for the feast day of Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son until word and sight convinced him. Grant us who have not seen that we may also believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Habakkuk. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. When the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. He ends the first reading. The epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here ends the epistle. Our Gospel is taken from St. John's Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. I do not call you servants but friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. But Thomas, who was called the Twin, one of the Twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. A thought for today. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. That is us. Thomas, I occasionally call the awkward one, is there for a purpose, to show us the way. Because we all doubt. I haven't met a person who at some stage or other has not doubted. So Thomas leads and shows us. 
But Thomas also did other things. There is a great tradition in India for Thomas, Thomas Didymus, the twin, a very special disciple. And that is our thought for today. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. Now, as today is a principal feast of the church, we will say the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, who him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray for the Church of Christ and as it tries to cope with COVID-19, and we pray for the persecuted church wherever it is. We pray in our diocesan cycle of prayer for our new bishop, Mark Tanner, and for Bishop Keith, Bishop of Birkenhead, and the great work he has done for the diocese. We pray for all the clergy and congregations in the Diocese of Chester. We pray for people throughout the world as we try to combat the spread of coronavirus. We pray for doctors and nurses and all who will be there for us when we are in need. We pray for all those who work in the health service, whatever their role. And we pray that Christ's Church, which is coming out of its darkness, will have a role to play. We pray for all those working on our behalf, for shop assistants, people who collect our refuse, deliver our milk and our post, and all who work for us and the betterment of our city. We pray for this nation and our Sovereign Lady the Queen and all those who hold authority under her. And we ask your blessing on this nation that we may be godly, quietly, and truthfully governed. And we pray for all those who suffer, in body, mind, or spirit. And we pray for the departed. And those who mourn. We also remember today our own families. And we pray for those who have nobody to mourn them. We pray for those who die in the gutter. And we pray for those who die violent death. 
may your perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear these our prayers. So we join all our prayers with those of Our Lady, your Blessed Mother, St. John the Baptist, St. Thomas, and all your saints, and we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our peace, which is a peace from face to face. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. So the peace of the Lord be with you all in your hearts and your minds. Father, accept all we bring to you this day. Guide us with your love and feed us at your table as you nourish the faith of the church by the preaching of your apostles. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. I pray that this sacrifice of mine and yours will be acceptable to God, our Creator and Redeemer. May the Lord accept our sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. As we move to the most solemn part of the service, we remind ourselves of the need to come to God in the simplicity of the prayer that our Lord taught his disciples to say, and we join with them in saying, the contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We join with all the choirs of heaven and earth and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And when he had given thanks to the Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And we give you thanks, Lord, because your Son, Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, sent forth his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations and to teach us the way of truth. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Holy Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compelled us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles, with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel, by the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and draw everyone to the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In thanksgiving we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, who has prepared for you a city with eternal foundations, bring you with all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for, this day and unto eternity. The Eucharist is ended. May the infinite and glorious Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit Direct our life in good works, and after our journey through this world, grant us eternal rest with the saints. Amen.